Well, Emmy fans, I am very excited because RuPaul's Drag Race has become a cultural phenomenon, and not only with viewers, but the, the general public and the Emmy voters have gotten on as well. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I am so excited to be here with the director of RuPaul's Drag Race and the reigning Emmy champ, Nick Murray. Yeah. Thanks so much for joining me reigning, today. The reigning, the reigning champ. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> it's true. Um, and I want to start there, actually, with, with the Emmys, because you, this category, the Outstanding Director of a Reality Series, um, is actually you're the inaugural winner of the category, because it was lumped in with the reality shows with nonfiction. There was a catch-all nonfiction category that changed, and you are suddenly the inaugural winner. So you set the bar, really, for, for this. Uh, yeah, that's true. I've set the bar. I've got the belt and the crown. Um, and I, to be honest, I was um, shocked to win last year. Uh, I mean, obviously, I was hoping, but, um, you know, the competition was pretty stiff uh, with the other four nominees. Um, and, you know, so when I heard my name, um, you know, I was I was I was shocked um, and unbelievably excited, which you can see in the uh, in the acceptance video. Um, yes, it was a, a surreal, um, amazing moment um, that um, I actually, uh, I, I relive, um, you know, every now and then on my phone, I just play back the video. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the traffic, just play it back. There you go. Don't worry about the traffic. I won an Emmy. <laughs> it's a great memory to have. Um, and he, that season you won for the premiere and now you're nominated again for the season 11 premiere, what you unpack in. Um, so I'm curious what, uh, you know, those premiere episodes are always special, especially with the entrances of all the queens. What made that uh, choice special to you? Um, well, we always, you know, front load it with a big celeb uh, and both um, season 10 premiere and season 11 premiere, you know, had a big name, big name star. So that always helps, um, you know, get, get, get the show out there, get it noticed. Um, and, and, you know, we always like to start the season with a big bang. Um, and, you know, we like to think we, we, we've not failed in the, certainly the past, uh, past, you know, four or five years, um, not just uh, when we won the Emmy last year. Mm -hmm. um, it's always exciting to see what the Queens are going to bring, you know, the new batch. Um, every year of uh, amazing personalities, um, you know, and designs and the dresses that they bring uh, and just how they work that runway, you know. Um, it, it's, it's always something that we're excited, you know, from, from the moment they enter the workroom uh, to the moment we see the first runway walk on the main stage. Yeah. And for Drag Race fans, I think the first entrances into the workroom are very you know, that's a lot of people's favorite aspect because the, it's the first time you, we see them interacting together and the first taste of Queens we may not be familiar with. So how do you decide then, um, what, like, is, what, is your input ever, do you give them input on how to enter the workroom or is it all just the energy they bring that feeds uh, We, um, and you know, the, whole, the, whole, the, 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 the show's a big collaboration with the producers uh, and obviously I have some input as well. Um, but we want to make, you know, we want to give each queen a moment. Um, they each have uh, uh, something they want to say when they enter uh, the, the, the room, whether it's a catchphrase of theirs or whether it's something um, that, that just announces who they are uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's, a, it's a glimpse into their personality. Uh, so we leave that up to them. Uh, staging wise, uh, we tell them to make a big entrance. We, you know, you hit a mark on the floor and, you know, visually you, you should say, I have arrived. This is who I am. Uh, so we make sure we get lots of shots of their outfits and I tilt up and down to see, uh, you know, all the details. And if there's any nuances in their outfits, are they bringing anything special hidden, uh, that we want to get shots of? So we, we let them have a good, a good 15 seconds uh, there just to, to visually as well as verbally announce, you know, who they are. Yeah. And you mentioned the celebrity guest. You disguised Lady Gaga as a contestant last year. I'll tell you. Oh. <laughs> and this year you have uh, Miley Cyrus going undercover as one of the crew members. And right. it was a ridiculous moment when Silky 
sort of picks her up and starts running around the room. Was there, was there any kind of reveal or anything planned? Like if Silky didn't discover her, was, was there something else planned? Um, well, we didn't know who was going to, um, you know, reveal her or, or realize that we, uh, you know, we planted Miley um, as part of the crew. Uh, and it was purely, purely luck, uh, I think, to a certain extent, who actually noticed her. Um, you know, we just, uh, you know, we thought Silky might be a good one to maybe try out. But uh, she'd already been in the room for a while, hidden behind the cameras, um, you know, looking behind, which I think we alluded to in various shots that, that we took of her. Um, so... Um, it was it was interesting to oh, hold on. It's an open walkie. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. Um, um, so yeah, we we we, you know, it, it, it was you know it, quite by chance that Silky, um, you know, noticed who she was. Uh, but there, there was no other real reveal. We would we would have gone, um, you know, around Queen, of, of, you know, from Queen to Queen until somebody cottoned on um, and, and noticed her. And then there was a plan, I think, uh, to kind of, um, you know, verbally give them some clues as well. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun uh, seeing um, them all realize. <laughs> <laughs> and Silky's reaction was just the icing on the cake, really. Uh, we none of us expected that. <laughs> Most of all, Miley. <laughs> and these episodes, especially a premiere, there's so many elements that you have to go back and forth between. You have the entrances, you have the challenges, you have the time with the contestants in the in the workroom uh, and the lip sync at the end. How, you know, is it a difficult process to decide, kind of? what you're following, what stories you're following, and how you're dividing up that time between all the elements? Uh, the show was a 90, that was a 90 minute uh, opening show, uh, which I think all, all last season was. Um, so the, you know, the, the, the time over the 90 minutes is all scripted out with the major beats, so the entrances, uh, the, the mini challenge, uh, the walkthroughs, the, the, uh, the, the announcement of the main challenge, and then the runway, uh, the critique, the liberation, you know, that's all, it's all scripted out over the 90 minutes, uh, in, you know, to, as an act breakdown. Um, and then we have an amazing story team that tracks uh, the story arcs from, for, for, the, for the episodic story arcs and the overall seasonal story arcs as well. Um, so, and then there's a big, you know, then there's a constant dialogue and conversation of who we're going to follow. Uh, as as various uh, stories that unfold throughout the season, really, um, you know, they're all big personalities, um, and there's only a finite amount of time that we can, it, you know, we have to fill. Um, but it, it's that, that's taken care of by the story department and the executive producers, and I'm there just to help facilitate covering that. Um, but there's a there's a lot going on in those first episodes. There's a, there's a lot of queens. Um, you know, we want to try and give them all as much time as possible um, before we have to get rid of people. Sadly, <laughs> you know, it's always uh, it's always unfortunate that we that we you know we have to start losing people even on the first episode. Uh, but that's the nature of the show, and it's also you know instigates them to really bring it. Um, to really show, you know, what they've got and who they are. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's all, you know, and, and to show them, you know, the personalities, the uniqueness, nerve and talent that Rue looks for in, in all the potential uh, crown winners. So it's, yeah. uh, it, it is a big undertaking each season. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot going on uh, and there's a lot of pre-production uh, before we actually start shooting as well. Yeah, the the thing with those, you know, eliminated queens, like no one wants to go home first. Obviously, no one wants to go home at all. But with someone like going home first, like Soju talking about her cyst, uh, and, <laughs> you know, her, and she's, she's obviously very upset. But the show is very good at when someone is really upset or detailing a, a story. That it's very kind of careful and nurturing of their emotions and their story. Mm -hmm. um, how do you navigate that? 
when you're dealing with those? Well, the show, like Rue says, is uh, it's about love. And, you know, that's the heart of the show. And I don't think it would be successful if it were as successful if it wasn't. You know, we care about these people. These some of these some of these personalities, these these queens have come um, have great great journeys uh, that we and we try and tell their stories, and it's never an easy road for for most of them. Um, you know, and we try and we try and get that out on the show. We try and you know we listen to them, we hear them. And we give them as much uh, love as possible, you know. And yes, some people have to go, but it's it's done with heart uh, and and feeling. And we let them know that they're that despite leaving the show, they're still part of the family. Uh, and I think that's that's really important. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, you know. Um, uh, Vanjie left episode one, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> is now a megastar. You made a name. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So you know, it, it's it's a great window. It's a great opportunity for all the queens, um, and and we tell them to make the most of it. Whether they're here for the you know the entire run and they win the crown, or they're here for the first episode, uh, and we're equally supportive of, of everybody. Yeah, um, you mentioned you were talking about pre-production and everything before, because I'm curious that on a technical level, like what is your timeline with the episodes? What does kind of a typical week look like for you in terms of filming? Uh, Pre-production, I, I come on probably a week beforehand when, when, um, when I physically come on. I come to the stage during load-in and uh, speaking with all the departments, the tech department, the camera department, um, the lighting department, uh, and audio, just to make sure, uh, based on the, the initial creative grid, that I've been in and out of meetings for you know the uh, previous weeks before uh, to make sure we've got everything we need um, uh, to execute um, each challenge or, or creative beat within the show, um, and then each episode is generally shot over two days. Mm. So the first day uh, we have uh, queen entrances as boys in the workroom. Uh, they have a little uh, chit chat, uh, and then we throw in the Rue mail. Then Rue arrives. He sets up the mini challenge. Um, they get ready for the mini challenge. We do the mini challenge. We announce the winner, and that segues into the main challenge. Sometimes giving the winner of the mini challenge uh, a slight leg up, uh, whether it uh, whether it uh, they, you know they get to go first in the main challenge or whether they get to pick the their teams first. Um, and then they work on the, the, the main challenge, uh, which is either shot in the afternoon of day one, or it's, if it's a runway main challenge, it's shot the following day, which is all about, uh, which is the runway day uh, and elimination day. So that's how, the, that's how the show's divided up over two days um, during a typical week. That's a very, very intense two days for um, all the I tell, You know, I tell you, there's a, there's, I've worked on uh, many reality shows uh, and, you know, across many different networks, and there is absolutely no way that I could ever be on Drag Race <laughs> and do the things that these, uh, these, these people do. It is incredible. You have got to be able to do everything. Sing, dance, be funny, be able to cry and expose yourself and show that vulnerability, which is actually a strength. And uh, also, so just to just just to throw that in as well, <laughs> it's incredible. And then to be put through that literally Monday to Friday uh, for uh, however long the season is, four or five weeks, uh, four or five weeks. It takes a very special person to be able to do that. And, uh, you know, I not only speak for myself, but um, I'm pretty sure most of the producers wouldn't be able to be on the show. It, mm -hmm. it's, it's grueling, and you really got to have something special in you. And I think, you know, we see that in, in every queen that, that uh, hits the main stage. Uh, they're, they're pretty special people. Yeah, and you um, have been with this show for a, a long time. 
Uh, I saw, I think it's 99 episodes of the main series you've directed, as well as working on All Stars installments as well. Okay. It, it might be more than that, actually. I've been on since uh, season three. Yep. Back in uh, 2011. So, you did the math. Is it 99? Uh, <laughs> I think it was 19. I think it was 99 when I looked at that. Plus, you know, you know, I know you did the Hollis Lay, the holiday uh, special, plus All Stars, but yeah, the, the whole, all the All Stars series and the holiday yeah. special, yes. But it's yeah. uh, it's interesting because the show started as you know this little show that could on Logo, and you've yeah. been with it, you know, watching it move from Logo to VH1, watching yeah. it really blow up and um, become this phenomenon. So how does that? you know, increased exposure and spotlight on this affect your work, your day to day? Um, I have to pinch myself, you know, I came on the show season three. Uh, I was fascinated by it. Um, I knew there was a lot that I could do uh, as a director on the show. And, you know, the show, uh, from my point of view, and what I bring to the show has slowly evolved over the years to how you see it now. Um, and, you know, uh, I wasn't expecting it to, to, to be the global, literally the global and cultural phenomenon that it is now. Um, you know, we always knew we had something special and I always, um, and I was, you know, I used to come home and tell my wife, I was like, you know what, there's something about this show. Um, it is unique, uh, in, in what, in, in what it's trying to do and, and what it actually does. And it is like no other show. No, no other show does what we do. No other show. We take elements of every other show and we lump it together in this uh, in this gorgeous pink and glittered extravaganza every week. Uh, that is Drag Race, um, you know. And people have have, have, have have cottoned on. They now know Drag Race. Um, and they, you know, they, they fully support it. It's, it's everywhere I go, anywhere in the world, uh, I tell them I do drag race and it's an, an immediate conversation starter. <laughs> you know, whether, whether I'm speaking to, you know, a teenager, whether I'm speaking to a straight male or a straight female, uh, you know, across, everybody loves it. It's not, it's not just, you know, it's not just in gay culture. Everybody loves it. It has something for everybody and a takeaway, which I think is important uh, for everybody as well. Yeah. Um, and, but, to, you know, over the past, I'd say, four years, to see it really explode has been special. Uh, you know, and I'm humbled and proud and privileged to be on the show. Um, you know, I really I love coming to work, uh, but I especially love coming to work on Drag Race. <laughs> It, it's interesting because it was a niche thing, like you'd only find drag in gay bars, really, but now everyone in the world watches. And do you, is there one aspect of it that you can pinpoint that you think really makes people connect with the show? Or is there one thing that you hope that your work helps them connect with? Um, good question. Uh, I don't, you know, the, the, the comedy in heart for me is, 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 is the soul of the show, um, you know, and it's, it's it, it, Rue's favorite thing to do, he says, is laugh, you know, and I think making people laugh br breaks down barriers, and it's something that we, we strive to do on a daily basis on this show, and, you know, it helps, it helps people smile, you know, and, and it's about giving that, you know, a good, a good feeling inside, um, inside, in, in, just inside you, um, put your worries aside for a moment and watch Drag Race. Uh, it'll make you feel good. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, um, it's, it's, you know, I think that's one of the big takeaways. Uh, it's not really, it's not about men in dresses. It's, it's so much more than that. Um, it's about heart. It's about, it's about that feel good factor. It's about seeing somebody's journey. Uh, and overcoming obstacles in their life. Um, you know, it's inspirational, it's aspirational as well. Um, it's all those things that, that, you know, help us to be better people. And, um, you know, I think what's going on in this country at the moment, we could all do with a little bit more drag race, to be honest. <laughs> uh, 
Um, you know, and I like to think that, that the show over the years has 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 helped. You know, push uh, push the conversation. So, yes, yeah, certainly conversations in the right direction. Um, in my opinion, it is 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 been the most culturally significant show in the past twenty years globally. I would say. Well, I think you're very successful charting those journeys. Um, so. We'll wish you the best of luck and cross our fingers for Emmy Emmy number two for you for this season 11. Oh, uh, sister. The reigning champ. Emmy needs a sister. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hashtag of mine. <laughs> we'll get that into rotation. Uh, get it into rotation. <laughs> everyone, everyone watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep informed of all of our Emmy updates this season. And Nick, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.